Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. Did you know that not only the Western countries developed their own ciphers? Clearly, also Russia, for instance, developed their own cipher. And in this video, we will have a look at the old standard that is called Ghost Magma. And we will discuss in detail how this cipher works. But before we start having a look at Magma, I also repeat what I repeated in my last videos. Please, if you want to support me and my channel, like and subscribe this video and the other videos to help me to grow the channel and also to make Crypto 2 more popular. Thank you. I structured this video into five different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at the history of the Ghost Magma block cipher. Then, I will give you a high-level overview of how Magma works. Then we will zoom into the cipher and we'll have a look at the round function. After that, we will discuss the key schedule. And finally, of course, we will do it in Crypto 2. I implemented a new Magma component that is also already available in the current nightly build of Crypto 2. And we will have a look at this. Ghost is a Soviet and Russian government standard symmetric block cipher. And it was developed in the 1970s by the KGB's 8th department. And in that time, it was marked top secret. And in 1990, it was marked secret. So from top secret, it went to secret. And after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, it was declassified and released to the public in 1994, and that is the time when we got to know of magma. Or at that time, it was called GOES 28147. And it was a Soviet alternative to the United States standard cipher of that time, the Data Encryption Standard, or DES. And we already had also a video about the DES on this channel. So if you're interested in that, please have a look at that video. Both ciphers, DES and MAGMA, are very similar in structure. So you can say that the MAGMA is the DES of the Soviet Union. And the most recent version of the standard is GOST R34.12.2015. And there are also RFCs describing MAGMA, namely RFC 7801 and RFC 8891. And in this GOST R34.12.2015, the standard cipher was also named MAGMA at that time. Here on the right way, by the way, you can see the emblem of the KGB, who is the inventor and developer of MAGMA. Let's have a look at an overview of the MAGMA cipher. And as I already said, MAGMA is a block cipher that means it encrypts blocks of the same size. It has a key size of 256 bit, a block size of 64 bit, and a total number of 32 rounds. And as DES, Magma is a Feistel network. Feistel means that you have a swap of left and right half blocks plus XOR. You will see this later. And MAGMA's so-called S-boxes, substitution boxes, can be also kept secret besides the key to increase the key size. But a chosen key attack can recover the contents of the S-boxes in approximately 2 to the power of 32 encryptions. And also MAGMA is considered broken and therefore should never be used for any serious security purpose anymore. Here on the right side, you can see a high-level overview of the MAGMA cipher. So, when you put in a 64-bit plain or ciphertext block into MAGMA, as with all Feistel networks, it is split into two parts. You have a left part with 32-bit and you have a right part also with 32-bit. The left part then is XORed with the result of an F function. We will have a look at the details of the F function of MAGMA later. 
And then the left part becomes the right part, as with all Feistel ciphers. And the right part just falls through a single round, so this is a round of magma, and becomes the new left part. And we have 32 of these rounds with magma. And the round key for the f function is 32 bit. Let's have a look at the round function in detail. Magma's round function consists of three steps. The first step is an integer addition of input and round key with modulo 2 to the power of 32. Then the second step is to apply the eight 4-bit S-boxes, so Magma has eight 4-bit S-boxes to the result. And finally, we perform a circular left shift 11 also on the result. You can see these three parts here in detail. You have the integer addition as a first step with the right side here as input and the round key as input. Then we have the S box or eight 4-bit S boxes. And then we have the left circular shift. And the result of this f function then is xor with the left input. And then, as I already said, the left input result is the new right output here. And the right input just falls through the round and becomes the new left output. The nice thing with Feistel networks is that when you apply the round keys in different order to the same network, you can just use the same cipher construction for decryption. So instead of giving the round keys as round key 1, round key 2, round key 3 until round key 32, you reverse this by round key 32, round key 31, and so on and so forth. Let's have a deeper look at the three parts of the round function. First of all, what does integer addition mean? The values here are always the result values of each part. And of course, we have the ith round key here and the ith right part as input. So the first thing we do is we add the ith right part to the round key i and we compute modulo 2 to the power of 32. We get our value 1. Then this value 1 is inputted into the s boxes to obtain value 2. What does input in S boxes mean? We have a 32-bit right half that goes into, or not the right half, the added part here, the value 1, that goes into the S boxes. And you can see here the definition of the S boxes. These are just lookup tables, or one big lookup table. So the S box 0, for instance, with the least significant byte here, you just take the four least significant bits of that byte, let's assume it is three as an input. So you just count here, zero, one, two, three, and you get zero D here, this is hexadecimal as output. So this is the first output. And you do this for all the remaining bits, the bits, the four bits that come after the first bits, and let's assume these are two, the number two, then we have zero, one, two, the result is two, and so on and so forth. And using all these S boxes here, you get a new value. This new value then is value 2 here. Then we perform a left circular shift of 11. And to program this, for instance, we take value 2, we shift it 11 to the left, and we take the same value 2 and shift it 21 to the right. And then we use the OR operator and we get here as a result the left circular shift 11 as value 3. And finally then we use the XOR operator and we apply the value 3 onto the left I of the current round. And this is then our new left I. And this is everything that we do in a single round of magma. So it's not very complicated. Now that we know how Magma works, and that it is a Feistel cipher, we need the round keys. And we obtain the round keys using Magma's key schedule. How does Magma's key schedule work? 
Magma splits the 256-bit input key into eight 32-bit round keys. So you have here the key as an input and you get round key 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. You notice here that the 0 round key or round key 0 is the round key at the most significant byte or bit position of the key here. And the round key 7, so the last round key, is at the least significant byte position here. So like you reversed the indices here. In each round of magma, a different round key is used based on the following scheme. We have first eight rounds, so uh, with keys 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, until 7, in ascending order that we use. Then magma reuses the keys again from 0 to 7 in ascending order. And then a third time, it reuses round keys 0 to 7 also in ascending order. So three times apply round keys in ascending order. And then in the final eight rounds, you apply or add or input the keys in descending order. So then 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0 round keys. And this is the key schedule. Split the key into 8 round keys, indexed by 0 and up to 7, and then apply in ascending order and then in descending order the round keys. Clearly, for decryption, the order of the round keys is reversed. Instead of going here left to right with the keys or with the round keys, you go from right to left with the round keys. And in the last round of encryption, there is no swap of left and right. Of course, accordingly, in the first round of the decryption, there's also no swap of left and right. Now that we know how magma works and how the key schedule of magma works, let's encrypt and decrypt using the GOST magma cipher component of Cryptool 2. I'm here now in the current nightly build of Cryptool 2, and as I said in the introduction of the video, I implemented the magma cipher over the last week. And here I want to show you how you can use Magma in Cryptool 2. And I will do this by creating a new workspace. So you click here on New and you get a new empty workspace in Cryptool 2. And since we want to use Magma, we just search for Magma. And then you can drag and drop the Magma cipher onto the workspace. The Magma component has different inputs. It has an input stream for yeah, this is an input. It has a key, a byte key as input 256 bit. And this there is a small error I can just see. It's not 8 bytes, it's 16 bytes. Then we have the initialization vector and we have the S boxes since Magma allows to provide different S boxes. But more on that later. Then we need a text input. This will be our lane text. And of course, when using a modern cipher, we have to convert the string or the, the plain text here that's um, encoded as string to um, a byte array. So we have a string decoder here. We connect these here and we connect the uh, stream output here. And then we say that please convert this uh, to uh, the input format is text, output, data, encoding, UTF-8. There, that's, this is okay. Then we have hello world. This is a test of magma. Ghost magma. Then we want to have a visualization of the output. So we need an encoder here. In this case set to text UTF. No, this is wrong. We don't have text here. We have hexadecimal because we have binary data that we want to C and to see binary data, we need a proper format to visualize it. This is our ciphertext. And now, of course, we need a key and some other inputs. So this will be our key. And since I am lazy and I need a 256-bit key, which is 16 bytes, I create new text input here. No, not the new text input, a text output. 
then the random component here, the random number generator, we can connect this. And then we use the uh, RNG crypto service provider in our random number generator, and we want to have 16 bytes. This is uh, 16 bytes. And actually, we need we don't need 16, we need 32 bytes. I'm an idiot. So this is our key, 32 bytes. Then we can stop this. And now we have a nice randomly generated key. Then the ghost magma component we changed to cipher block chaining and the padding mode is PKCSM. And of course we need to connect the key. And since we use cipher block chaining, we need an IV initialization vector. Since I'm very lazy, I use also the same input. Here. Oh no, let's not not let's not do this. Let's let's create also a random initialization vector. So I this is our IV. Let's connect this here. And for the IV, since we have 64-bit um text or blocks, we need a crypto service provider and eight bytes. So this here is our IV. And then we can just text input IV for initialization vector. We need a converter for that. And the converters have to be set, of course, to hexadecimal since we enter hexadecimal keys and IVs here. And then we connect the IV. Now we can press play and magma tells us the init vector is too short. Oh, I forgot the init vector. Okay, let's press play again. And it encrypts nicely our plain text. Of course, we also want to decrypt that. So I copy everything here to decrypted plain text and we connect the output of the one magma component with the second one we change this to decrypt and then we need the key of course the same and we need the iv also press play and then we see that we forgot to change the string encoder to text and now it should yes it should also decrypt our encrypted text again to our original message. And of course, with, like with all um, Crypt 2.2 com components, we can live uh, enter text here and it live encrypts and decrypts. Now I want to show you another very nice thing with Magma, with the Magma component, and that is when you increase the size of the component here, you can actually have a look at the inside. And in the inside view, you see the structure that I have shown you in the introduction of Magma. And what you can see here is that we have different rounds here, 32 at, uh, at the end here, 32 rounds. And with every round, you can see the input of the round, the left side and the right side. You can see the round key and the, round, uh, the number of the round key that is used. And you can see the output of the round key uh, the, the output of the uh, of the left part of the round and the output of the right part of the round. And then you can see that these are exchanged. You have the swap of left and right. And then you can follow the encryption yeah, through the cipher. This is really nice when you want to uh, build your own implementation, for instance, with Python or another programming language. And of course, with the decryption, you can do the same. Now let's have a look at some settings of the Magma component. First of all, as I used already, you can change the action to encrypt and decrypt. And the chaining modes, the block chaining modes, and the padding modes are the same as with all the ciphers implemented in Crypt 2. Then you have the possibility to change the S-boxes. And as I said, the S-boxes were initially kept secret later some were released. And here we have the S-Box from the standard 34-12-2015. And you have the S-Boxes that were used by the Central Bank of the Russian Federation. And you can change to that. And of course, when you use the wrong S-Boxes here, then this doesn't work. You have to change the S-Box also, or the S-Boxes also in the second cipher. 
and then it works again. And as I also said, you can provide your own set of S boxes. How does this work? I like to generate random S boxes. And to do so, I also use the random number generator. Then I set the random number generator to the RNG crypto service provider. By the way, this is the provider the, for um, random numbers provided by uh, the .NET framework. Then you can attach a text output to that because we want to have the values. And the lookup tables that we need are 8 times 16. These are 128 bytes. And then we have 128 bytes. These are now our new 4-bit S boxes. I copy these, I stop this here, and then I need a new text input for the S box definitions. So these are our new S boxes. And this is something that I really like with this um, cipher and this component here. This is the first cipher where you can encrypt to, to exchange the S boxes. Since yeah, they allow this. If this is a good idea, this is another question because there are design criteria for good S boxes and to allow people to change the S boxes on the one hand is good because you can input secure S boxes. On the other hand, this can be bad because you can input weak S boxes. And you could even argue maybe this was the idea that people have to put in their own S boxes because then it's weak and it's able to be attacked if you want to attack it. Now let's copy the string decoder. We connect the string decoder and we connect the S box output with the first one and the S box output here or the string decoder output with the second magma. And now it should use our S boxes definition. So when I restart this template here, the cipher text should of course change because we changed the S boxes, the heart of the cipher or the, the hearts of the cipher. And But of course it should be still able to decrypt the plain text. So let's give it a try. Yeah, and as you see, it changed the cipher text here completely because we changed the S boxes. But of course, since we changed the S boxes with the component encrypting and the component decrypting, we can still decrypt using yeah, these components with the new S boxes. Yeah, and this is a new Magma component in Cryptool 2. You can now use this on your own and test it and play around with it. And maybe you even want to implement Magma on your own, then I highly suggest that you have a look at the standard. It's freely available. Also, there are really good uh, Wikipedia articles about Magma. Yeah, and you could, for instance, implement it in Python and then use Crypto 2 for testing your implementation. Clearly, we tested our implementation with the test vectors in the standard and implemented Magma in the right way. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this video. I first showed you how Magma works or the short history of Magma. Then I showed you how Magma works, how the round function works, how the Feistel network works. Yeah, and then finally, I've shown you here how you can use Magma in Crypto 2. And as I said, this is everything I wanted to show you in this short video. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up. This really helps us to grow the channel and to make Crypto 2 more popular. Also hit the notification icon if you want to be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.